everyone, Excuse me. Kathleen, Tuana. We are still celebrating uh, Jurassic July here on my channel in honor of the 20th anniversary of Jurassic Park 3, which will uh, come up uh, next weekend to be exactly. And if you uh, have watched my show last weekend, then you have seen this toy here, which ignited the dinosaur hype uh, with so many kids and adults around the world. This is the original 1993 Kenner Toys Jurassic Park Electronic Red T-Rex. And only four years later, in 1997, The Last World hit the big screen. And, of course, uh, the toy hype continued. Uh, still with Kenner Toys having the official license and the undoubted star of the The Last World toy lineup was the Tracer Tyrannosaurus Rex, which we are going to look at today. And here it is. And yes, I still have a uh, boxed one, actually in a sealed box, so this is worth a lot nowadays. can easily go uh, between $500 and $1,000 if uh, the box is still in a good condition. And you can see they switched the main color from uh, red to green for their toy packaging with the familiar logo that we already uh, knew from the first classic Jurassic Park movie. And this figure is certainly packed in a beautiful way. A really nice display box without a plastic window so we can actually uh, it, uh, not only a look but also a feel of this uh, mainly uh, rubber figure which does come with a couple action features such as the one that you can see here the uh, uh, jumping jaw action and of course uh, it's named Trasher T-Rex because it has a Trashing action that's, that's activated by the tail as you move it side to side, which we will uh, uh, have a look later on. But first, let's take a look on the back of the box. And here we see again uh, another uh, beautiful diorama that they just created for the purpose of this packaging design. This is a lot of effort that kind of put into uh, this toy to marketing of this toy and we can see the uh, Trasher T-Rex in its restrained gear which I unfortunately no longer have well there would be one inside this box here but of course I'm not going to unbox this as to not to destroy the value so unfortunately uh, I cannot show you this but still um, hopefully it gives you an idea and we can also see um, three of the human action figures, Eddie, Dieter and Ian. And there's a nice product lineup shown uh, below here. I remember I had the Stegosaurus. I wasn't a fan of the uh, bulky Rex because it's not the Stan Winston sculpt. So it doesn't look uh, too accurately for a T-Rex, but still it was, it was a cool toy, of course. And as you can see, um, all of these toys were made by Kenner, which still had the license in 1997. Eventually, uh, Kenner was taken over by Hasbro uh, for uh, just in time for Jurassic Park 3. And the Jurassic Park 3 toys were made on the B. Hasbro brand already. Uh, on top of the box you can see how that would have worked with the restraint gear. Uh, unfortunately I misplaced uh, all of the restraint gears I had. I had several traffic T-Rexes during my uh, childhood and early toy collecting uh, days. Unfortunately uh, none of them is still here. Which tells you that I played a lot with my uh, dinosaurs. So you can see you put the restraint gear on, it's actually uh, two parts, and then press the 
tails side to side and it would eventually break free. So putting this box aside here and then of course we are going to look at a loose Rasapurex, one of many that I have and since this one doesn't stand too well anymore I'm going to have Triceratops uh, T-Rex uh, main tray to assist a little bit in this display uh, the Triceratops is also from uh, the 1993, from the first Jurassic Park movie. Uh, these toys go together very well, of course. And now, let's take a look at the Tracer. And if you are wondering about the red color around its uh, mouth and teeth, then, uh, uh, as I already told you, I played a lot with my dinosaurs. And at some point during my childhood, I customized this one to feature a bloody mouth, bloody teeth, to give it an even more realistic look. And speaking of a realistic look, I am moving the camera in a way so you can see an original recast of the Stan Winston maquette behind me. Uh, fifth scale from Chronicle Collectibles, so you can uh, compare the classic T-Rex with uh, what was basically used for production of the movie. And the classic T-Rex represents the female T-Rex from the last world. And you can see the head sculpt is done uh, very nicely, very accurately. The coloring is much more movie accurate than the 1993 uh, Kenner T-Rex. I like this uh, golden color along with dark uh, striping across his body. You can see the neck is a bit more uh, bulky than on the uh, maquette which you can see behind me. That's probably to house the uh, mechanic mechanism for uh, the head crossing action. We have beautiful eyes on this girl, uh, very nicely painted, really gives the Tyrannosaurus Rex a lot of character. The teeth are all an individual length as you can see, uh, scientifically accurate to a real Tyrannosaurus Rex and when I open its fall, then the, you can uh, already see the first action feature that this figure has. If you open the fall all the way, the tongue uh, snaps into place. It actually uh, locks in an upright position. And this gives, gives you the view of the detailed uh, inside of the uh, upper and lower claws. Look at that, it's really nicely molded. And if you push the tongue down, then the claw will actually close and it's kind of like a biting action. So if you feed it, a, if you stick a smaller dinosaur figure into its mouth, it pretends like it's eating the dinosaur. Take a close look on how the transition between the golden main body color and the uh, uh, white uh, belly portion uh, has been done on this toy. It looks uh, kind of like weathered and that uh, for sure um, adds uh, to the realistic look of this figure. Uh, I like that this is not a clear um, line between these two colors rather it fades into each other and it uh, has a weathered dirty look and as you play with this figure over the years uh, the more you play rough that effect will actually uh, increase as the paint uh, clips off so it uh, it will look even more weathered and dirty over time and that's actually uh, really cool that, that make, the more you play uh, the, the more realistic uh, 
your transfer key rex will eventually look. And uh, I think that that's a really cool uh, thing to, uh, to note. Um, it's actually not a bad thing if the uh, paint, uh, the white paint slips off. Uh, no, it's, it's actually uh, the, the opposite is true. It, ma it makes the T-Rex look more realistic. And then let's go further across her body. You can see her arms and a really nice upgrade compared to the 1993 T-Rex is that they painted her arm claws in black. That's really, really cool. And the arms do not stand out as much, they do not extend as much um, as on the uh, previous T-Rex, previous big T-Rex figure from 1993. So this is a much more scientifically accurate Tyrannosaurus. The arms do move 360 degrees and they are perfect rats onto prey. That's what likely uh, was the main purpose of T-Rex arms. They were too short to reach the mouth, but they were able to hold onto prey like this. You see the Triceratops which is actually in scale with this um, Tyrannosaurus. Um, it's perfect size for the T-Rex arms to hold onto. And then going back across the torso, uh, really, really nice how you can see the ribs and the muscles. You actually can not only see them, you can also feel them. If you touch it with your fingers, um, the skin really is uh, wrinkled uh, to simulate the ribs. And of course, we do have many other. Uh, smaller skin folds and wrinkles across the top of its body mainly. And then the legs, they are poseable and they are made out of plastic unlike the body which is made out of rubber. You can see it is also a really nice uh, sculpting and molding top. You can see the bird-like feet with three claws which are painted as well in black and underneath on the soles uh, he actually does have some profiles, some structure in there. It's not just flat. And then panning across her nicely curved tail. You can see the tail is uh, very accurate compared to the Stan Winston maquette behind me. Nicely curved all the way to the end. And if you look at the underside, you can see the uh, scales, the scale like skin uh, between its legs and the arms. That's really, really cool. On the right hand leg, we can see the official Jurassic Park logo. Uh, along with the number 29 and a side B stamp. And as I already told you in the last episode, um, you basically cannot copyright uh, something like a dinosaur toy as a toy company. Dinosaurs cannot, are basically a public domain. They cannot be copyrighted. So they had to come up with a way to trademark these toys as the officially licensed Jurassic Park toys and that was by creating this simple logo and have it stamped on the, uh, onto the toys so everyone would see these are the only official Jurassic Park toys because the, there were many dinosaur toys around at that time actually even before the first Jurassic Park movie uh, released but of course none of these toys, none of the other toys were as authentic and cool uh, as the official Jurassic Park toys. Remember, if it's not Jurassic Park, it's extinct. Now we were talking about the action features. You already saw the uh, saw something action, but now I'm going to show you the feature that has given this toy its name, Jurassic T-Rex. And for that to operate, 
you hold both of her legs with one hand and then with the other hand you grab the tail uh, close to her torso and then move the tail side to side and then take a look on the head and the neck and you can see the head moves corresponding to the tail. If you move the tail to the left you can see the head passes to the left as well. If I move the tail to the right, her head uh, passes to the right. In terms of articulation, the arms move 360 degrees. They do not go in and out. They only move 360 degrees around. And the legs are posable as well. So you can uh, Play with her in a running pose, for example, like this, or basically assume a hunting pose with the muscle all the way down to the ground. Well, you can also do the very opposite of this by lifting her up, just like if she's going to let out a loud roar. You can also open her mouth to simulate the roar, but the figure does not have any uh, electronic functions, so there are no sounds, no batteries, no electronics in here, but that's totally okay. I mean, uh, the figure is beautiful the way it is and doesn't really need electronics. Sometimes it's it's best anyway to just imagine. And by the way, here's a handy dandy tip uh, in case the uh, leg joints should become loose on your transfer, which can happen after uh, such a long time. Um, there is a way to fix this and that is by placing a rather thick rubber band uh, into the slit between the body and the legs, right around the joint, make sure it's, it's tight around the joint, and that way the uh, legs will not move as smooth anymore, but that's exactly the point. Your transfer will be able to uh, stand upright uh, way better if you use the rubber band trick. It's simple yet effective. And while we've got her mouth wide open, we can also bring in the triceratops as well and play out an attack scene. You can actually see that uh, the bike is large enough to uh, fit around the triceratops neck, which is uh, what likely happened in uh, real life as well. Um, it's, uh, there's evidence that um, T-Rex teeth have been found in Triceratops bones and so we know that Triceratops was one of the main diet of Tyrannosaurus and you can simulate and recreate an attack just like that. These figures go together very well and, but on the other hand it's also been proven that uh, Triceratops was the aggressor sometimes uh, and what it would do was to raise its 500 pounds head and ram its horns into the side of the, of the Tyrannosaurus and since these models are in scale with each other you can get a very good idea how this must have worked. Triceratops horns weren't actually horns, but rather direct extensions of its bones. So these were very, very sturdy and were able to uh, seriously harm a T-Rex, uh, which was more than double the size of a Triceratops. Uh, speaking of size, uh, the Triceratops T-Rex is slightly um, Smaller than the original 1993 Tyrannosaurus Rex, if we uh, put them together side by side, you will see that the 1993 Red T-Rex um, is about 
for instance, longer, yet about the same height as the Krasner. So that makes the Krasner T-Rex around 21 inches long and 8 inches tall at the hips. And you can see uh, uh, if I place them together like this, you can see the differences in the uh, neck sculpt. Yet the head is really, really uh, accurate, true to the Stan Winston sculpt. And of course, um, the body of the original T Rex is a bit more bulkier, and of course, the uh, uh, it doesn't have any leg points, so they were able to uh, mold that part more accurately to a real-life T-Rex. Yet both of them are really cool toys, and you can imagine that I spent hours uh, battling these two T-Rexes against each other during my childhood. And yes, of course, the sound effects in the original one, they still work. So lots of fun uh, childhood memories in these toys and if you want to get your own Krasner T-Rex then you can still find them on eBay nowadays, at least the loose figures um, for uh, still a decent price of uh, between $50 and $80. The original retail was $29.99 back in 1997. However, the boxed versions, and I mean sealed box, these have become uh, really, really rare, and they go uh, for anything between $500 and $1,000. So if you ever happen to see one, it's going to cost you quite a bit. Uh, but honestly, uh, having a Lewis Trasher T-Rex is just as cool since then. there's a lot of playability with this figure. Uh, really authentic uh, movie accurate design and I really like these rubber figures they are very very cool and perfect to uh, recreate movie scenes to photo shootings uh, attack the smaller dinosaurs or human figures that were available uh, for all the classic movies so, uh, you will have a lot of playtime fun with these classic dinosaur figures. So bottom line, the Transfer T-Rex was my favorite uh, classic T-Rex toy. Um, actually all the way uh, up to uh, until uh, Mattel took over the license. The Transfer T-Rex definitely uh, was the toy I loved the most uh, for uh, all of the uh, classic Jurassic Park films and this is really pretty much a perfect toy. Uh, the combination of its movie accurate design, really really authentic face sculpt, uh, uh, detailed mouth and of course uh, the action features that made it a perfect dinosaur toy, perfectly sized and perfectly designed. So thanks a lot for traveling down memory lane this week. Next week we are going to celebrate the actual 20th anniversary of Jurassic Park 3 which released exactly 20 years ago next weekend and we are going to do that with the main toy of Jurassic Park 3, uh, the 2001 Hasbro animatronic Spinosaurus the definition of a badass dinosaur and a badass toy and I'm looking so much forward to feature this toy for you next weekend here on Kidwana's Toys. So until then I say goodbye and stay tuned.